Long time no see vlog channel. So this one's gonna be quick and dirty, hopefully. I mean, it's not, it's gonna be a long video, but uh, it's certainly gonna be kind of vlogger mode and I'm doing it on my phone because I don't have my current camera set up uh, down here. So we can't do it professionally, but I wanna talk about this guy. Just quick cliff notes beforehand. I've done one full video uh, that kind of showcased some of my favorite partners in the 3D printing hobby. Talked about materials, talked about why I choose the printers that I do to use to like make the things that I do on Next Level Nerf. Uh, the Cliff Notes Captain Dummy version of that is if you want something big, dumb, and cheap, buy a CR10. If you want something small, smart, and slow, uh, buy a Prusa Mark III. So I highly recommend these guys, and then I recommend something that shoots uh, a little bit wider and a lot taller uh, in terms of its overall build volume. Both great printers. The CR10 floats around 400. These guys are pushing 1,000. At this point, if you buy them built, if you don't, they're like 800. So uh, what if there was something in between? Super smart. A little smaller than a regular Prusa, um, but priced uh, pretty, pretty fairly. So this guy comes in at $400. The issue is that it's got like a four month wait time right now. And so I know that a lot of nerfers are considering this machine as their first machine. I know that a lot of nerfers are considering this machine to like start uh, their own kind of small hobby space business. And I just wanted to go through it. So I know nothing about this. I'm going in cold. I paid full price for this machine. This one is not sponsored by Prusa. We have been sponsored by Prusa in the past, but uh, this one is just completely uh, full disclosure. We bought it, we got it very early. We wanna take it apart, we wanna install it. We're actually going to make this video over the course of a week. Uh, so this will not be a first impressions video. This is gonna be uh, how hard was it to build and then what kind of prints could we get off of it. Let's go. Right, so I wanna do a quick overview of what you get out of the box. Uh, just really quick, cause some assembly is required. You get the base, uh, which looks very normal for Prusa. Again, significantly smaller than a Mark III. You get two rolls of sample filament. And in my case, I paid for a full roll of Prusament just cause it's better to have it and not need it, need it and not have it. Uh, looks like this guy's gonna be using an adapter. So this brick uh, takes us down to 24 volts. Uh, so you're gonna need that power inverter to run this guy. Then you've got a PEI sheet here. So it's still magnetic, which is pretty nice. Uh, this one's interesting. This is a flash drive uh, that explicitly says important. This has the firmware on it, so don't lose that. The spool holder looks like it's assembled. Uh, then you've got this, which is the LCD, uh, I guess, setup. That's probably eventually gonna sit there. And then you have the whole uh, bracket up here that's gonna have to go in together. And what's interesting is that this only has uh, one motor that takes it up and down as opposed to two. Theoretically being smaller, you can get away with having less stability, but we'll wait and see what kind of prints we get off of it. We are gonna hold and reserve our judgment. And then of course, it wouldn't be a Prusa if you didn't get at least a couple of bites of gummy bears. That's probably the biggest letdown immediately out of the box is that I'm used to far more gummy bears. Uh, other than that, there's instructions. Let's piece this guy, guys. So total assembly time is like a little over 30 minutes. Even the bears are many, which is kind of cool. Uh, you can see here, we've got our setup wizard. We're gonna go ahead and crank through that. This spool holder is cute, but I think largely unnecessary if you have a better spool holder or you're more familiar with like Bowden style uh, setups on printers, but hey, who knows? Let's, uh, let's fire up a couple test prints, guys. Okay, so we look a little scruffy now. Uh, no big deal. So, uh, final thoughts, Prusa Mini, is it good for Nerf? Absolutely, it is. There's some things that you're not gonna be able to print, and that's unfortunate. So, you can't print like a hummingbird on it, uh, but I'm sure you could slice them smaller. Obviously, if you can't print a hummingbird, you can't print a saber. Uh, you can't print like uh, certain uh, pieces, so like if you do the Tower of Power, for caliburns the way that I do, you can't print those, but if you print them in individual segments, you should be fine. Uh, I think that this could print a talon claw as well. It's got the height to print a uh, the Armax for that as well, just barely. Uh, let's talk about quality. So since these are so cheap, you can afford to run multiples of them or you can run them very slowly. Uh, you can get pretty high quality. So I spent the first two days tuning this uh, Dialing in my retraction settings for a variety of filaments I like to use. Obviously, you're gonna have to dial it into filaments you like to use, uh, but, I mean, that's funny. You can see over there is a bunch of copper 3D stuff that we're using for uh, printing for good, I think is the best way to put that, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. So here's a protopasta steel, um, and hopefully those layer lines are showing through pretty clean. Uh, a little bit of stringing on the inside, but nothing major. Overall, a very, very clean print. Almost uh, almost looks sculpted that way. I've always really liked 
how that filament goes. So here's a uh, not quite an arcane resolution. This is at 0.05. This is uh, Captain Slug's new Hammer Prime Blaster, and you should be able to see there, like layer lines, ultra clean, uh, bed adhesion very smooth. Um, overall, I didn't have a lot of trouble with the, uh, the bed adhesion. Uh, so that's PLA. Um, then we've got some steel composite. I didn't do anything with wood. Uh, this is HT PLA. And this printed very cleanly. This is a no, no supports, no nothing. So you can see some of the bridging there uh, wasn't amazing, but what are you gonna do right now? It's printing something else. I've played with speed, I've printed fast, I've printed slow, and I'm pretty happy with it. It prints by and large, just like a Prusa. So uh -huh. it's a Prusa for $350. You can print, like I said, just about everything. You can print all of the burns. Um, Pretty much anything Captain Slug's designed, pretty much none of the stuff that Timmy's designed. Um, I think that you can print most of Heath's stuff on it. Obviously, you're not doing a, a bulwark on this guy, uh, but um, by and large, most Nerf projects will fit. Now, as far as like tinkering with your stuff, printing magazines, you'd only be able to print super small magazines, uh, but that's just kicking it off. Like in terms of materials, it doesn't like PETG. I think that that's like a bed temp thing. I was having an awful, awful time getting it to print PETG. I did print a couple of things in PETG. I got like a little button piece for a costume printed in PETG off of it, but overall do not recommend. That said, if you're looking to build a fleet, uh, the screen is actually nicer on this. The interface is nicer, I think, than on a Mark III. There are a lot of things about this printer that lead me to think that it is significantly improved over the Mark III. If it weren't so small, I think that it would be a slam dunk uh, the open sort of area here is a little bit spooky at first, but assuming you don't damage it or touch it or mess with it, I've had no issues printing uh, pretty consistently. I printed that uh, grip piece uh, right here on this edge of the bed just to, just to kind of play with it, see if I could get some ghosting. But uh, overall, not bad. If any of those words aren't making sense to you, I have a full video on uh, 3D printing for the Nerf hobby on my main channel, Lord Draconical. But... Uh, that's the Prusa Mini for Nerf, guys. It was quick to come together. Uh, it handled a week of pretty much 24-7 printing like a champ in a variety of different materials. Tuning was light, but that's just because Prusa Slicer is really, really good. And I'm rambling on and on and on and on. So uh, it's 350 bucks. I don't want to say, like, just buy it because that's an awful lot of money, uh, especially if you're one of the younger Nerfers in our hobby. But if you've been looking to get into this, You've been considering something like a CR-10. I still think that the CR-10 is an incredible printer if you plan on printing big stuff, but this is almost stupid proof. The auto leveling works like a charm. It actually has more Penda points uh, than a regular Mark III. A Mark III has nine. I think that this has 16. It's like very good in terms of its mesh leveling. Like I said, just a lot of improvements. And it's really hard to beat that price. Uh, again, full disclosure, paid full price for this one. Uh, upon finishing this video, bought three more for nextlevelnerf.com because we're getting a lot of orders and at our resolutions with our quality, it takes a long time to print our blasters and the only way that we can get more time out of uh, the same day that everybody else gets us with more printers and these guys are an excellent option. So uh, you can literally buy three of them for about the cost of an assembled Mark III. It seems like a no brainer. Uh, the wait time, however, is quite large. So jump on it now. Um, again, I'll throw a link in the description box below if you want to learn more about this printer, pick one up over at prusa.com, but uh, not an affiliate link, just uh, happy to have worked with them in the past and would love to work with them in the future, but uh, this printer is awesome, needs no advertisements. I think that's it. Thanks for watching guys, much love, Nerf on, Drek out.